Hello everyone to the first video of the week. Here we have what we've already discussed is our intertemporal budget line. So that's the IBL. This model is showing the relationship between the current level of consumption or consumption in period one and our future level of consumption or consumption in period two. Currently, we're only working with a two period model. First, let's talk about why this is linear. I'm gonna take a random point right here where we have a combination. This is the amount of C1 and this is the amount of C2. So this is my amount of current consumption. This is my amount of future consumption. Now, what if I want to consume more in period one? So I wanna increase my consumption in period one. Well, what am I giving up? Right, I'm giving up some consumption in period two. What am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to borrow from my future consumption. And if we're borrowing, how am I going to get more money to borrow? I'm going to have to pay some sort of interest. So you can see the interest rate's going to play a big role in moving from one point to the other. Since we have the assumption that the interest rate is going to be the same whether we're borrowing or we're saving, either way that we move on this intertemporal budget line is going to be the same, and that's why we get this to be linear. Okay, now that we have that covered, let's erase this. Let's erase all the stuff that we just drew on it. And let's talk about three specific points that I really want um, everyone to focus on here. Let's do this in the color red. The first point is going to be right here. I'm going to label this point with a one. A point up here on the other end, which is going to be point two. And then there's going to be a point right on the 45 degree line. So this is a 45 degree line, and we're gonna look at that point as well. So these are going to be three important points that we're gonna talk about. Let's move this a little bit so we have a little more room. And so what happens at point one? Well, at point one, this is where all of the resources are going towards period one, right? So look right here, this is what C1 is going to be, and if I were to go all the way over to C2, it's going to be zero. So we are not consuming anything in period two. So that must be the point that represents where all the resources are going in period one, and I'm not consuming anything in period two. I am completely borrowing against my future in order to consume in period one. Part two, point two is going to be the opposite, where all is going to period two, meaning we are going to be saving everything, right? This is C2, and again, if I come down to my horizontal axis, that would be a zero. And so what we notice is we're going, everything's going to period two, so we're saving everything, not consuming anything right now. Now, these two uh, points are pretty much irrelevant, right? We need to have individuals are consuming something in the future or something in the current period. They need to consume something in period one and something in period two or else, you know, they would die. We have to consume food at the very least. So we are interested in places that are in the middle somewhere. And the point three is pretty important because at this point along the 45 degree line is C1 equals C2. And so if C1 equals C2, we call this perfect consumption smoothing. So perfect consumption smoothing. It is the point of perfect consumption smoothing. It is the point of consumption smoothing. That means that we are going to uh, consume the exact same amount in period one as in period two. And us as human beings, we actually like to consumption smooth, meaning we're right at the 45 degree line on our IBL. We don't like to, you know, as soon as we get paid one day, we, we go ahead and we spend it all and then we, then we eat ramen noodles for the next two weeks. What we really try and do is we try and space out our earnings and we even do this throughout the lifetime. And, and that's going to be one of the models we talk about next week. But for now, looking at intertemporal choice, right, we're choosing between current consumption and future consumption. One choice is going to be right here in the middle, which is perfect consumption smoothing. Of course, maybe we'll want to consume more today and less tomorrow, more tomorrow and less today. We might be somewhere along this, but do know that right on the 45 degree line is consumption smoothing. 